Welcome to All Home Care Matters, the show where we discuss all things home care with discussions on important age-related matters and topics. Brought to you by Enriched Life Home Care Services, the number one rated home care provider in Michigan by top rated local. Hello, and welcome back to All Home Care Matters. If this is your first time visiting us here at the show, we want to say thank you for taking time out to be with us today. We appreciate how valuable everyone's time is, and that's why we try and make each episode here at All Home Care Matters something that will hopefully matter to you. Today, we're going to ask the question, are you a caregiver? We will be discussing what a caregiver is in detail. Many families are acting as caregivers without even realizing it. So we'll be talking about the ways people act as caregivers both officially and unofficially. According to Better Health While Aging, there are two questions you can ask yourself to determine if you are currently a caregiver. The first question is, are you concerned about the health and well-being of a special older person? And the second question is, have you been helping an aging relative or friend with health and life tasks? Even just a little bit, like by looking up health information online, for instance. If you answered yes to both of these questions, surprise, you are a caregiver. Sometimes, though, people are thrown off when being called a caregiver because they assume a caregiver is a professional position, but that is not the case. Better Health While Aging also makes the point that we do, after all, have other terms available for doctors and nurses. These include clinician, healthcare provider, or healthcare professional. Better Health While Aging has defined the following types of caregivers to help you have a better understanding of what a caregiver is and why they don't have to be professionals. A caregiver is a person involved somehow in the caring for, or otherwise assisting an older person with health and life task. They are usually someone who has a long-standing personal relationship with the older person. Hence, these are family members or a friend. A family caregiver is the same as a caregiver, but sounds warmer and fuzzier. However, many people who behave similarly to family caregivers are not actual family. They may be close friends instead. Some neighbors take on amazing amounts of caregiving for an older person. Unpaid caregivers are also sometimes referred to as informal caregivers, but this term tends to downplay the amount of care many family caregivers are providing. A paid caregiver is someone who is paid to provide help and care, and usually this term refers to paid in-home care, such as a home health aid. Of note, many paid caregivers develop close relationships with the person they care for. And lastly, a care manager is someone who works alongside caregivers and usually is a paid professional who oversees and organizes services for an older adult. If you spend a lot of time with an older loved one and occasionally help them perform regular daily tasks and household chores, you fall under the caregiver category. Even so, some may still have trouble identifying themselves as a caregiver. According to Value Care, there are eight major signs to look out for to determine if you or someone you know is a caregiver. The first sign is spending time with your loved one every day. You may not realize it, but just spending a couple of hours a day with your loved one can be classified as caregiving. Rather than simply going to visit and catch up, you end up visiting every day to ensure they are okay and daily tasks are completed. The second sign to look out for is assisting with or taking over cleaning and maintaining household duties. The everyday tasks that you do with little or no exertion can provide great difficulty for the more vulnerable or elderly individuals. They may have trouble doing the simple tasks of cleaning or modifying their house. As a caregiver, you help around the home and complete these tasks for them, giving them little to worry about when it comes to the upkeep of their home. Cooking for your loved one is the next sign. As their caregiver, you provide cooked meals for them and ensure they do not go hungry. It may seem simple to many people, but the idea of making a meal can be a big hassle and an extremely daunting task. Those suffering from dementia or Alzheimer's may even forget to eat without your reminders. You may find yourself cooking their meals for them and organizing their food in a way that makes it easy for them to heat and eat, minimizing all the additional steps in between. This basic task may seem like just helping a loved one, but is a clear sign that you are becoming a caregiver. Running errands for someone is an often overlooked sign of caregiving. When it comes to running errands for your loved ones, do you do their shopping or run to the post office to send some mail while they stay at home? If you find yourself doing these tasks, it can be important to understand that you fit the profile of a caregiver. Weekly shopping can become a difficult task for vulnerable and elderly people. 
the difficulty of navigating their way to the supermarket and walking around for long periods of time may reduce their number of shopping trips. As a caregiver, you take it upon yourself to ensure there's always enough food in the house. So if they are hungry, then they can always find something to eat. The fifth sign that you are providing care for a loved one is helping maintain their personal care and hygiene. For an elderly or vulnerable person performing daily tasks such as showering and getting ready for the day, it can be extremely challenging. The elderly can find it increasingly difficult to maintain their personal hygiene, struggling to get up and look after themselves properly. You may find yourself laying out their clothes for them at night or helping them shower so you can help reduce the risk of them falling or injuring themselves. Taking your loved one to and from the doctors is the sixth sign. Multiple doctor visits are a regular occurrence when you are a caregiver. It can be a long, tiresome day, and you may sometimes think you spend more time at the doctor's office than you do at home. Ultimately, this is a job role that you take without really understanding the full implications of the position. Your unconditional love is displayed through the way you would do anything for them and whatever it takes to get them better or make their life a little easier. Having to do this on the odd occasion may seem normal, but once it becomes a monthly or even a weekly occurrence, it is yet another sign that you are a caregiver. The next sign is paying your loved one's bills and sorting their mail for them. This is particularly relevant for your elderly loved ones that simply forget about paying bills that they owe or sorting through their mail for important documents. Older people are also often targeted by scams, so it's vital to check their finances, looking out for important letters, overdrawn bank accounts, and any unpaid bills. Without realizing it, you're a caregiver helping them to cope with the financial obligations of life. And the last major sign that you are a caregiver for your loved one is ensuring medication is taken. This last and possibly most significant sign is ensuring that your loved one has taken all required medication at the correct times and in the right dosage. If they forget, it could potentially be fatal. As a caregiver, it is crucial that you make this your priority, particularly for elderly individuals, as it can be a daunting task. Have any of these signs stuck out to you in your own life? If so, you are a caregiver for your loved one. You may not like to think of yourself as a caregiver or of your loved one needing a caregiver. It may seem daunting, but a caregiver, when you really look at the root of the position, provides help to a loved one. As a caregiver, you are helping your loved one. Providing help can be challenging at times, but it can also be very rewarding too. According to the American Psychological Association, a 2014 survey by the National Opinion Research Center found that 83% of caregivers viewed it as being a positive experience. Many family caregivers report positive experiences from caregiving, including a sense of giving back to someone who has cared for them. The satisfaction of knowing that their loved one is getting excellent care personal growth, and an increased meaning and purpose in one's life. Some caregivers feel that they are passing on a tradition of care and that by modeling caregiving, their children will be more likely to care for them if necessary. Many caregivers also report that they find benefits in their role and activities. This is increasingly seen as a positive form of coping with stressful circumstances and situations. Benefit finding may be a product of the ability to find meaning through positive reappraisals, spiritual beliefs, or other adaptive coping mechanisms in the face of stress. Caregivers who perceive more benefits from caregiving report lower levels of depression. This sense of satisfaction and well-being can have important benefits for caregivers well after their caregiving role has ended. But people react differently to the news that they are now providing care for a loved one. According to Easter Seals, caring for someone on a regular basis is a mixed experience. There are positive feelings associated with helping others. If you're caring for your mother, father, or spouse, there is a satisfaction of knowing you are, in some way, returning the support they once provided you. Along with the positive feelings that come with caring for a loved one, many caregivers experience a sense of isolation and of being alone with a huge responsibility. Some worry or have doubts about the quality of care they are providing their loved one with and feel guilty that they're not doing enough. Resentment towards a loved one being cared for is another common feeling that caregivers experience and is normal to feel. Many aspects of your life change when you have to care for a loved one. Along with resentment comes anger at the lack of time a caregiver has for themselves and their families, and frustration that this is not what they had planned for in this time of their life. Many caregivers also experience fear over how much longer they can keep up with their caregiving duties, given all of the other demands on their time. When caregivers are overwhelmed, many also are confused about where to turn to for help and feel that they have to shoulder all of the responsibilities themselves. 
While caregiving for a loved one, many often have a sense of loss because the person they love has changed so much and they experience grief for the anticipated loss of their loved one. And lastly, almost all caregivers experience physical fatigue. Providing care for a loved one and keeping up with all aspects of one's normal day-to-day -day life is exhausting and is physically draining on a person. It's important to recognize these feelings you experience and to actively seek support when you are overwhelmed with caregiving. You should not be suffering while helping your loved one. The Easter Seal says there are steps you can take to avoid or reverse caregiver exhaustion. Remember, taking care of yourself is taking care of the person who depends on you. Try some of these ideas drawn from the experiences of many caregivers like yourself. Share decision making. As long as the person you are caring for is able, involve him or her in the decisions that go along with care. Try to be active partners. It will help your loved one retain a sense of independence while taking some of the burden off of you. Remember your needs. You need time to get away from your role as a caregiver to relax and to get additional support. These needs may create feelings of conflict or guilt, but again, remember, you are taking care of the person who needs you by taking care of yourself. Anticipate needs. The earlier you discuss needs, the more time you have to explore possibilities. Then you will feel better about the choices you need to make in the future. Understand what you are dealing with. Gather information about the specific disease or conditions of the person you're caring for. The more you know, the better you'll be able to plan for the future. Involve others. Ask other family members and friends for help. People usually are willing and pleased to be asked. They just may not volunteer. Consider a family meeting to brainstorm ideas and to see how to share responsibilities. Talk. Share with someone outside the family about your reactions to caregiving. Use a friend who isn't close to the situation as your sounding board. And be flexible. Just when you think you are in control, something will change. Being thrown off balance is frustrating. Try to be ready for change. Remember that you are not alone in this. Your friends, family, neighbors, and community can help if you ask. You just have to take the first step and tell someone you need help. Now that we've talked about what a caregiver is and how you can help yourself as a caregiver, let's move on to one caregiver story. Veronica wrote to Shield Healthcare to share her life lessons from being a caregiver. Veronica says, occasionally, as you journey through life, you meet someone who makes such a lasting impression and has had such an impact on your life that you're never quite the same. Two very special ladies that she worked with as a caregiver fit that description well. A friendship developed between Veronica and the two ladies that taught her valuable life lessons that continue to impact her journey today. There were many differences in the relationship she had with each woman Veronica cared for. One lady was in the early stages of dementia when Veronica accepted the role of companion for her. She was welcomed into the woman's home and treated like a guest. Veronica's role quickly transitioned from companion to caregiver. Fortunately, before that happened, a bond of friendship and trust had developed between the two that made the journey through the progression of dementia as comfortable as it could be. The second lady was struggling with the loss of independence that was being stolen away by Parkinson's disease. At first, it was obvious she was having some difficulty adjusting to needing someone to drive her wherever she wanted to go, prepare her meals, and do the housekeeping tasks that she was accustomed to doing herself. She became more accepting of Veronica's presence when she realized that she was there to help her, not there to take control of her life. Together, the two spent lots of time finding ways for the woman to retain her independence for as long as possible. When independence was no longer a possibility, she willingly accepted the assistance Veronica provided. A friendship developed between them and memories were made that Veronica says she will treasure forever. Veronica remained a caregiver for both of these ladies until the time of their death. The lessons she learned from these women and their unique situations made a poignant impact on her life. Many times throughout the years of assisting these ladies, she was reminded that whenever she thought she was having a bad day, the perfect way to put her day in perspective was to realize that her bad days were better than their best days. They would have considered it a wonderful day if they could simply have gotten out of bed, gotten dressed, and had breakfast without any assistance. The unique experiences that these two caregiving opportunities provided have caused Veronica to live with a greater awareness of how important it is to not only seize the day, but to acknowledge, appreciate, and enjoy the special moments that occur within each day. Working as a caregiver taught Veronica that earning someone's trust is one of life's greatest rewards. She also learned that life goes more smoothly when she makes patience the key word for every day. 
Through her time caregiving, she found that regardless of how different the person or the circumstance may be, the following ideas apply to each caregiver situation and ultimately to each aspect of life in general. Prayer helps, attitude matters, trust is a must, encouragement is motivational, niceness melts away tension, compassion promotes friendship, every friend is a gift, and independence is a treasure. Please visit our show notes to read Veronica's story in her own words. Providing care and companionship to a loved one in need may just seem like the right thing to do and something you do without even giving it a second thought. To your loved one, your care can be life-changing. Needing to rely on others for daily living activities can both be scary and embarrassing for your loved one. Providing care with grace and respect can help your loved one feel worthwhile and loved. According to Easter Seals, you may think that you just do not have the time, talent, or resources to be a caregiver. But what it really comes down to is simply being present for another. While many aspects of caregiving call upon a wide range of skills, cooking, cleaning, bill paying, etc., the starting and ending point is focusing on another person. We may find at times that we are short on funds, skills, or time, but when caring for another, we need to be long on attention. Holding someone's hand, pulling the chair closer to the bed, putting everything else aside, that's the heart of being a caregiver for someone you love. As a caregiver, you are a part of your loved one's support team, but make sure you have your own support team. Taking care of yourself is necessary when providing care for another. Make sure you are keeping up on both your physical and mental health and take breaks when you need to. You may feel alone during this journey, but you are not alone. Reach out to those around you when you need help. You can also visit our website for more resources on how to ask for help, as well as how to take care of yourself during this time. We want to say thank you for joining us here at All Home Care Matters. All Home Care Matters is here for you and to help families as they navigate these long-term care issues. We invite you to please visit us at allhomecarematters.com, where there's a private, secure, fillable form where you can give us feedback, show ideas, or if you have questions. Every form is read and responded to. And please, if you know someone who could benefit from this episode, please share it with them. And remember, you can listen to the show on any of your favorite podcast streaming platforms and watch the show on our YouTube channel. Just make sure to hit that subscribe button so that you never miss an episode. We look forward to seeing you here next time on All Home Care Matters. Thank you. Thank you for joining us today. We look forward to you joining us again on another episode of All Home Care Matters. To learn more about the show and to connect with us, visit us at allhomecarematters.com.